Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, a Golden Masterworks book, Against the Fall of Night, by Arthur C. Clarke, 1953. First, let's talk about Golden Age Masterworks. As you can see, there is a different logo on the cover. Instead of the SF Masterworks down the side here, we have it across the top, Golden Age Masterworks. And the font is a little bit different too. On the side, we kind of have the best of both series of the SF Masterworks. We have the yellow and black spine. The only thing missing is a number to number this series. And on the back, we have again the best of the two series. We have a black bar that has the bio for Arthur C. Clarke and a couple of testimonials. And then we have in yellow the blurb for the book. Regarding the golden age of science fiction, most people started in 1939 with Astounding Magazine and John W. Campbell. It continues on to at least 1950. Stories from Astounding became many novels in the 1950s themselves, as they were put together as fix-ups or collections. I would also say some of the novels written in the 1950s are Golden Age masterworks. As we get closer to the end of the 1950s, though, it becomes debatable. Golang started publishing the Golden Age Masterworks in 2019. So I'm including the Golden Age Masterworks in my read-through of the SF Masterworks series from Golang's. Let's now talk about the novel. It's a very short novel. 133 pages. In the year 10 billion AD, Diaspar is the last city on Earth. Ageless and unchanging, the inhabitants see no reason to be curious about the outside world. But one child, Alvin, only 17 and the last person to be born in Diaspora, finds that he is increasingly drawn to what lies outside the city walls, even though he knows the invaders who devastated the world may still be out there. An early version of one of Clark's most successful books, The City and the Stars, this short novel is a perfect example of Clark's powers as a writer. Diaspar is a utopia, a utopia stuck in its decadence. It may even remind you of Wally -E and people stuck in their decadence in that animated movie from Pixar. Outside of this city, it is all sand and dust and desert. This is the last city of humanity. Or is it? Alvin, a young prince of the city, seeks to leave the city walls. This is the outward urge that all of us seem to have. But in Diaspora, he is the only one seeking to leave the limits of this utopia. His journey will take him beyond these walls, and eventually beyond the confines of Earth. Is this a dying Earth, or is there an opportunity for rebirth? There is some quite beautiful prose in this novel, as noted by the introduction by Stephen Baxter. They watched in silence, and with them, all the thousands in the streets and towers of Diaspar, until the last cloud slowly faded from sight, sucked dry by the hot, parched air of the unending deserts. Against the Fall of Night, first published in 1948 in a minor American pulp magazine, would ultimately become the seed of what many regard as Clark's finest novel, The City and the Stars, from 1956. Its setting is Earth's last city, Diaspora, gleaming like a jewel on the desert, closed on itself and tremendously old, its inhabitants hiding from a dangerous universe. This Stapledonian book of eternity itself had a long conception, that striking opening image of the world's very last cloud evaporating over a desert city came to Clark out of nowhere in 1936 at age 19. Because it was my firstborn, he wrote in a 1990 introduction, the book has always had a special place in my affections, yet I was never completely satisfied with it. He wrote several drafts before his war service, but a 1946 draft was rejected by Astounding Stories. Clark produced the final, longer form nearly 20 years after that first flash of inspiration during a long sea voyage. In the last third of this novel, 
I got a haunting reminder of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Most people talk about Arthur C. Clarke's short story The Sentinel as the inspiration for 2001 A Space Odyssey. But I think the conclusion of this book is also another pillar or theme of 2001 A Space Odyssey. As I read more and more of Clarke, I see themes that seem to play through many stories. Setups where a society isn't what it seems. Paradigm shifts where we see a society or even a technology in a different light. And conclusions which elevate things to another level, often a cosmic level. Against the Fall of Night has many of these characteristics. In 133 pages, it is a template for some of his future stories. I give this short early novel of Arthur C. Clarke 7.5 out of 10. Have you read Against the Fall of Night? How about The City and the Stars? Do you see a connection between the two? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.